uh, one of the things that I saw that I thought was really interesting was you said that your personality changes according to which languages you speak. Uh, and the example you gave is that you're more humble in Portuguese and more sarcastic in English. Could you just talk a little bit more about that? Well, the humility being humble comes with the fact that you are making mistakes. <laughs> I'm Ethan, your Real Life English Fluency Coach, and today you will improve your fluency, vocabulary, and pronunciation with Gavin Roy. You will also get some advice that will help you to teach your children or someone else English. And if you want to understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles, then you have found the right channel like our subscriber Ivy, who says that their English listening and speaking are improving every day with our channel, and yours will too. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss a single new lesson. Your wife isn't Brazilian, so it's, you don't have that excuse either. But are you teaching your kids Portuguese at all? I am. Yeah, I speak to my son, who's two and a half years old now, only in Portuguese. And uh, it's a wow. beautiful thing. I, I mean, my wife actually has been learning a lot of Portuguese just through the things that I say to mm -hmm. him 20 times a day. Like, you know, don't stand up. I need you to sit right now or, uh, you know, any of those things. And he, it's been beautiful to watch how he's spoken to me only in Portuguese, spoken to my wife only in English, and uh, to see his languages blossom out of him. So he, he's really growing up in a, in a sense in a bilingual household, even though both his parents are, are Americans. Yeah, that's right. And we spend part of the year in Brazil every year. Um, Netflix, mm -hmm. when he does watch cartoons or something, we put only in Brazilian Portuguese. It's amazing that we have mm -hmm. that resource now. And he has a, a Brazilian baba, like a girl who watches him, uh, one of our friends for like four hours, four times a week. So it wouldn't be enough just me. You need a bunch of other different things. Just like any language learner needs a bunch of different things. Yeah, and there's so many, like you said, of those things that uh, most parents are, are giving their kids anyway, uh, be it TV shows or games on the iPad or any of these sort of things that you could potentially, especially if you're... Uh, learning English and you want to teach your kids English, there's so many of these that are available, right? Yes. Yeah. Again, there's never been a better time. I mean, with most streaming services now, you have the option of changing any single show into English. You know, it's definitely English, but even like French, Portuguese, these bigger languages, Danish, I see all the time. So uh, yeah, it's it's a cool time to be alive as a language learner. Yeah, and, uh, and a parent, I can imagine. Yeah. And how did you get over, because isn't there an initial awkwardness to speak to your child in something that's not your mother tongue? I mean, in a sense, it's your mother tongue, the language that your mother spoke to you, and there's maybe a natural inclination to speak to your own child also in that language, right? It's hard. I told myself I would never speak to Finn in English from the day he was born, but the day, the first day I held him, and I couldn't speak in Portuguese. I had to like talk to him in English, <laughs> um, and of course, he's not understanding much as a one-day-old, but I, I kind of slid into it um, as he got older from three months to nine months. You know, um, It wasn't all at once. And so it wasn't a day where I just felt awkward speaking to him. No, I kind of like taught myself expressions. I learned how to say things like diaper or, you know, how to sing certain songs in Portuguese. And, and it was a growing process for me, too. Now it's completely natural. In fact, when I see any kid, I start speaking in Portuguese and forget, oh, no, it's just <laughs> just with Finn right now. So it takes a little bit of time, but uh, it, it, I think it's better to, to go into it instead of just having that one moment because it will be more awkward that way. I am. Yeah. I speak to my son who's two and a half years old now, only in Portuguese. And uh, it's a wow. beautiful thing. I, I mean, my wife actually has been learning a lot of Portuguese just through the things that I say to mm -hmm. him 20 times a day. Gavin used a lot of connected speech to analyze in this short extract. Let's break it down a little bit in order to facilitate the comprehension. He's been learning a lot of Portuguese. Just the first thing to observe here is the reduction of has. As it functions as an auxiliary and does not carry much meaning, we almost don't hear the vowel. It is reduced to hus. Something else to observe in this extract is how a lot of becomes a lot of. He's been learning a lot of Portuguese. 
Now let's take the opportunity to practice your pronunciation of the TH sound since in the next extract we have a lot of them, just like a tongue twister. Just make sure to cut the T sound in just so it connects more easily into through. Just through the things that I say to mm -hmm. him. In the number 20, we have an NT. When we see these two letters together, Americans often drop the T, like in international and can eat. So instead of 20, say it like 20. Finally, let's connect everything together in times a day to make it sound almost like a single word. 20 times a day. It's been beautiful to watch how he's spoken to me only in Portuguese, spoken to my wife only in English, and uh, to see his languages blossom out of them. The verb blossom is related to plants. When a tree or plant blossoms, it produces flowers. For example, the cherry tree is beginning to blossom as spring approaches. However, Gavin uses the expression blossom out of in reference to a person to mean that this person develops something like a skill or a new talent in a natural way. Example, as I grew up in a family of musicians, aptitude for music blossomed out of me. So he, he's really growing up in a, in a sense in a bilingual household, even though both his parents are, are Americans. Household is all the people in a family or group who live together. Let's check out an example in episode 233 of the Real Life English podcast. Yeah, actually, I've lived with a few people that we don't speak the same language and we had a few complications <laughs> at home, just totally different mindsets and ways of behaving in a share house. <laughs> totally. Sometimes that even happens like with a sibling, with like your brother or sister, and that can make growing up awfully hard in the same household. Yeah, that's right. And we spend part of the year in Brazil every year. Um, Netflix, mm -hmm. when he does watch cartoons or something, we put only in Brazilian Portuguese. It's amazing that we have mm -hmm. that resource now. We sometimes use do or does in affirmative sentences to express emphasis. Take a look at this different moment of the interview and keep your ears tuned for how I exaggerate the pronunciation of do. But just not knowing English limits him, whereas like he has friends who have been able to, for example, move to Amsterdam because they do communicate well in English. So... And he has a, a Brazilian baba, like a girl who watches him, uh, one of our friends, for like four hours, four times a week. Here, Gavin uses a word in Portuguese, baba. Then he explains its meaning. Which of these words could we not use for this meaning in English? Nurse, nanny, babysitter. Now you may be wondering, what's the difference between a nanny and a babysitter? Both a nanny and a babysitter play a role in supervising and caring for children when parents are away. Babysitters are short-term caretakers who are typically hired to watch the children for a set period. Babysitters often stay with children while their parents go on a date or meet the children after school if the parent has an appointment. In contrast, nannies typically work consistently full or part-time for a family. This means they're usually working anywhere between 20 to 40 hours a week with one family. Nannies sometimes also provide housework and are very involved in the children's lives. It wasn't that pressure for them to speak in English. Um, I have some other, it's called an au pair, but like a nanny, um, nanny friends at that time who didn't speak any French and their children who they watched spoke English much faster. Now when learning a language like English, all the time, you will come across words with very similar meanings like nanny and babysitter. Without an experienced teacher or coach to explain the difference to you, you can get trapped making the same mistakes and feeling confused. That is why I recommend that you listen to full interviews just like this one with Gavin on our Real Life app. There, you get the full interactive transcript and vocabulary explanations from us. Something else that is crucial is that when you learn new vocabulary and expressions that you use them right away so that you do not forget them. That is why on the Real Life app, at the touch of a button, you can also meet people from around the world and practice your English speaking anytime, anywhere. You want to know the best part? This is all absolutely free. I bet it sounds too good to be true, right? But if you download the app now, you will see that it is true. You can do that by clicking up here or down in the description below, or simply search for Real Life English in the Apple app or Google Play Store. See you there. 
And there's so many, like you said, of those things that um, most parents are, are giving their kids anyway, uh, be it TV shows or games on the iPad or any of these sort of things that you could potentially, especially if you're uh, learning English and you want to teach your kids English, there's so many of these that are available, right? The phrase, these, those sort kind of things is used when you want to say something in general or things that are related to what you've just said. Yeah, so my husband's family originates from India. So mm -hmm. that's why like Diwali is a huge festival. Um, it's a really beautiful one as well. And, um, you know, from entering this family as well, I've learned a lot of these traditions and follow a lot of those traditions as well. Yeah. So I'd say like in the US, you'll find these kind of things a lot too. And I think that's something that makes it, um, it's really beautiful because it's of that diversity. Right? Potentially means the same as possibly. Like, you know, in, when you consider all of the things that could go wrong in your life, in your world, that one thing, you know, is potentially not going to be as bad as, as all of the others. Yes. Yeah. Again, there's never been a better time. I mean, with most streaming services now, you have the option of changing any single show into English. If we say that there's never been a better time to do something, it means you should start doing it right now because all the conditions are favorable. Example, with all the technology available, there's never been a better time for all of you to connect with people from anywhere in the world. It's hard. I told myself I would never speak to Finn in English from the day he was born, but the day, the first day I held him and I couldn't speak in Portuguese. I had to like talk to him in English. <laughs> um, and of course he's not understanding much as a one day old, but I, I kind of slid into it um, as he got older from three months to nine months, you know, um, it wasn't all at once. If something slides, it moves smoothly over or against something. Example, the kids love sliding down the slide. What Gavin meant here is that he gradually started to speak Portuguese to Finn, his son. Do you know what the opposite of this would be? And it was a growing process for me too. Now it's completely natural. The verb to grow has various meanings. You may be familiar with the phrase of verb to grow up, which means to develop from being a child to being an adult. Grow also means to improve, get better and bigger. We often use this collocation, a growing process. Gavin has improved himself in the process of teaching his son Portuguese. Example, being a teacher is a growing process. The teacher learns as much as the student does. Uh, one of the things that I saw that I thought was really interesting was you said that your personality changes according to which languages you speak. Uh, and the example you gave is that you're more humble in Portuguese and more sarcastic in English. Could you just talk a little bit more about that? Well, the humility being humble comes with the fact that you are making mistakes. So I, I'm a perfectionist. I am very um, like rigid. I have, I have a PhD in science. Um, and, and so when I'm speaking my native tongue, I feel some license to be able to make sarcastic comments. That's just like my personality. I'm, I uh, like wordplay. You know, it's, as a native speaker, you're able to be exactly who you are. When I'm in, when I'm speaking in Portuguese, like I've gotten used to this idea of having to say ten times during a long conversation, ah oh, man, I didn't catch that. You're gonna have to say, sorry, I know, I should have studied more. You know, things like that where you're, you have to be humble. You know, you have to be, you have to be friendly. You have to be um, accepting and, and happy about your mistakes. And so it, it just comes with the territory. And Czech, I would say, I'm even more humble and, and accepting of my imperfections because I'm even less fluent in that language. Right. Yeah. I think that when you're speaking another language, for me, a lot of times I feel like a, a little kid, you know, in some sense that I'm jumbling together my words and uh, there's something I don't know, quite know how to say it. So I'm trying to find some way to communicate what I want to say because, you know, it's it's more important really in the end that you're you're communicating than that you're saying it perfectly. That's true. But definitely... I think feeling like a kid and everything, in some sense, it gives me maybe a more playful personality in other languages because yeah. I, I try to just, in some sense, lean into that fact that, okay, I'm not perfect in this. People are going to know I'm not a native speaker. Yeah, lean into that. I love that new expression of English, to lean into something, to like own it. Um, and I mean, it depends too on what the, like in Portuguese, 
I, I say that Portuguese has made me an extrovert in English. I'm normally like rather quiet. Um, and in Portuguese, for example, during conversations, you have to nod your head a lot. You have to give a lot of feedback because if you're not, the other person wonders if you've if you're paying attention, if you've understood everything. Whereas in English, like if you're telling me a story, Ethan, I could sit there with my arms crossed and just like nod every once in a while. Well, the humility being humble comes with the fact that you are making mistakes. Humility is a feeling or attitude that shows that you do not think that you are better or more important than other people. If you describe someone as humble, they present these characteristics. Let's listen to Justin's insights on humility and how important it is for us as language learners. That's also a good response if somebody asks, you know, do you speak English? If you want to be humble, because it's really easy to say, yeah, I speak English, but we're all learning, the truth is. So you can say like, well, I get by in a humble way to say like, you, you survive, you, you, you get by. So I, I'm a perfectionist. I am very um, like rigid. I a rigid substance or object is stiff and does not bend, stretch, or twist easily. For example, the house was built on a rigid steel and concrete structure. As for a person, if you say someone is rigid, they are unable or unwilling to change their thoughts, ideas, behavior, etc. Example, Adam is very rigid in his thinking. I have, I have a PhD in science, um, and, and so when I'm speaking my native tongue, I feel some license to be able to make sarcastic comments. That's the phrase, feel, have, be given license to do something, means to have permission, freedom, or flexibility to do what you want. Example, after a hard week of work, I gave myself license to drink some beer with my friends. It's just like my personality. I'm, I uh, like wordplay. You know, it's, as a native speaker, you're able to be exactly who you are. Wordplay refers to the activity of joking about the meanings of words, especially in an intelligent way. Take a look at this joke where Ollie used wordplay. Why was six scared of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Did you get the joke? I'm not sure if you can see my cards, but the funny thing here is that the number eight, the number eight, is all a number, but it's also the verb eat in the past. Ten times during a long conversation. Ah, oh, man, I didn't catch that. You're going to have to say, sorry, I know, I should have studied more. If you say you didn't catch something, it means you did not understand what someone said. Gavin highlights the use of this phrase to demonstrate humility when you don't understand something during a conversation. So don't hesitate in using it. So inspiration is the piece that helped me, uh, whether I was at work listening to my Japanese manager and her assistant manager talk to each other, right? Go back and forth. And I so wanted to be able to communicate with them. I was like, that sounds so cool. The language is fascinating and I'm sitting there and I could catch a few words and I just wanted to know. By the way, if you want to sound more confident when you speak English, instead of saying, I didn't understand you, try saying, I didn't catch you. And so it just comes with the territory. And Czech, I would say I'm even more humble and, and accepting of my imperfections. Here, Gavin uses an interesting idiom. Territory is land owned by someone, especially by country. If you say that something comes with the territory, you mean that you accept it as a natural and unavoidable result of the situation you are in. For me, a lot of times I feel like a, a little kid, you know, in some sense that I'm jumbling together my words and uh, there's something I don't know, quite know how to say it. So I'm trying to find some way to communicate what I want to say. If you jumble things or if things jumble, they become mixed together so that they are not in the correct order. Example, he's making a new film by jumbling together bits of his other movies. It's true. But definitely, I think feeling like a kid and everything, in some sense, it gives me maybe a more playful personality in other languages. If someone has a playful personality, they are sarcastic, arrogant and snobbish, friendly or humorous. And I think approaching speaking a new language, especially if the sounds and the way it feels in your body and the rhythm is very different from your own native language, that you have to have a sense of playfulness, openness, experimentation. And you know, with experimentation and curiosity goes the openness to failure. Because yeah. I, I try to just, in some sense, lean into that fact that, okay, I'm not perfect in this. People are gonna know I'm not a native speaker. If you lean into something, you accept or embrace something difficult or unpleasant. 
usually through determination or perseverance, and find a way to benefit from it. I'd like to think that the, um, the edge of my comfort zone is where I'm, I'm getting comfortable in hanging out. <laughs> That's how I move forward. I don't move forward in leaps and bounds, but I move forward in little, little tiny baby steps. Which probably is, it can seem a little bit hard to believe because you seem so natural on camera and, and I'm sure giving presentations and everything. So you've really, you've really pushed yourself, I think, to lean into that fear. Like you're saying that, that, uh, your quickening heartbeat and everything. Yeah. Lean into that. I love that new expression of English to lean into something, to like own it. Um, I mean, it depends too on what the line, like in Portuguese, as Gavin pointed out, own it has a similar meaning as to lean into something. To own it means to accept and take responsibility for something. Example, I made the call, it was my decision and I own it. And in Portuguese, for example, during conversations, you have to nod your head a lot. If you nod your head, you move it up and down, sometimes several times, especially to show agreement or approval. If you want to demonstrate a disapproval or disagree with someone or something, you shake your head. You have to give a lot of feedback because if you're not, the other person wonders if you've if you're paying attention, if you've understood everything. To wonder means to speculate about some possible situation, occurrence, or result. Example, I wonder if the world has always been this way. Whereas in English, like if you're telling me a story, Ethan, I could sit there with my arms crossed and just like nod every once in a while. If you do something every once in a while, you do it. Rarely. Sometimes. Um, for Hungarian, we're currently reading Eye of the World, but my teacher and I also talk about food and recipes a lot. So every once in a while, we'll work on a recipe or um, we'll just focus on reading. And so that, again, it gives me something that I have to work on throughout the week. Uh, your wife isn't Brazilian, so it's, you don't have that excuse either, but are you teaching your kids Portuguese at all? I am. Yeah. I speak to my son who's two and a half years old now, only in Portuguese. And, uh, it's a wow. beautiful thing. I, I mean, my wife actually has been learning a lot of Portuguese just through the things that I say to mm -hmm. him 20 times a day, like, you know, don't stand up. I need you to sit right now or, uh, you know, any of those things. And he, it's been beautiful to watch how he's spoken to me only in Portuguese, spoken to my wife only in English, and uh, to see his languages blossom out of him. If a language blossoms out of you, it disappears and you forget it completely, becomes embellished with flowers, develops naturally. So he, he's really growing up in a, in a sense, in a bilingual household, even though both his parents are, are Americans. Yeah, that's right. And we spend part of the year in Brazil every year. Um, Netflix, mm -hmm. when he does watch cartoons or something, we put only in Brazilian Portuguese. It's amazing that we have mm -hmm. that resource now. And he has a, a Brazilian baba, like a girl who watches him, uh, one of our friends for like four hours, four times a week. So it wouldn't be enough just me. You need a bunch of other different things. Just like any language learner needs a bunch of different Yeah, and there's so many, like you said, of those things that um, most parents are, are giving their kids anyway, uh, be it TV shows or games on the iPad or any of these sort of things that you could potentially, especially if you're uh, learning English and you want to teach your kids English, there's so many of these that are available, right? Yes, yeah. Again, there's never been a better time. I mean, with most streaming services now, you have the option of changing any single show into English, you know? It's definitely English, but even like French, Portuguese, these bigger languages, Danish, I see all the time. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a cool time to be alive as a language learner. Yeah, and, uh, and a parent, I can imagine. Yeah. And how did you get over, because isn't there an initial awkwardness to speak to your child in something that's not your mother tongue? I mean, in a sense, it's your mother tongue, the language that your mother spoke to you, and there's maybe a natural inclination to speak to your own child 
also in that language, right? It's hard. I told myself I would never speak to Finn in English from the day he was born, but the day, the first day I held him and I couldn't speak in Portuguese. I had to like talk to him in English. <laughs> um, and of course he's not understanding much as a one day old, but I, I kind of slid into it um, as he got older from three months to nine months, you know, um, it wasn't all at once. And so it wasn't a day where I just felt awkward speaking to him. No, I kind of like taught myself expressions. I learned how to say things like diaper or, you know, how to sing certain songs in Portuguese. And, and it was a growing process for me, too. Now it's completely natural. In fact, when I see any kid, I start speaking in Portuguese and forget, oh, no, it's just <laughs> just with Finn right now. So it takes a little bit of time, but uh, it, it, I think it's better to, to go into it instead of just having that one moment because it will be more awkward that way. Uh, one of the things that I saw that I thought was really interesting was you said that your personality changes according to which languages you speak. Uh, and the example you gave is that you're more humble in Portuguese and more sarcastic in English. Could you just talk a little bit more about that? Well, the humility being humble comes with the fact that you are making mistakes. So I, I'm a perfectionist. I am very um, like rigid. I have, I have a PhD in science. Um, and, and so when I'm speaking my native tongue, I feel some license to be able to make sarcastic comments. That's just like my personality. I'm, I uh, like wordplay. You know, it's, as a native speaker, you're able to be exactly who you are. In which of the sentences below do we have examples of wordplay? Why are teddy bears never hungry? They are always stuffed. Why didn't you call me? I'm sorry, I completely forgot. What do you call a knight who is afraid to fight? Surrender. When I'm, in, when I'm speaking in Portuguese, like I've gotten used to this idea of... What do you hear after? I'm speaking in Portuguese like... I forgot using this idea. I've gotten used to this idea. I've got news in this idea. When I'm in when I'm speaking in Portuguese, like I've gotten used to this idea of having to say ten times during a long conversation, ah oh, man, I didn't catch that. You're gonna have to say sorry. I know, I should have studied more. You know, things like that where you're you have to be humble, you know, you have to be, you have to be friendly. You have to be, um, accepting and, and happy about your mistakes. And so it, it just comes with the territory and check. I would say I'm even more humble and, and accepting of my imperfections because I'm even less fluent in that language. Right. Yeah. I think that when you're speaking another language, for me, a lot of times I feel like a, a little kid, you know, in some sense that I'm jumbling together my words and uh, there's something I don't know, quite know how to say it. So I'm trying to find some way to communicate what I want to say because, you know, it's it's more important really in the end that you're, you're communicating than that you're saying it perfectly. That's true. But definitely, I think feeling like a kid and everything, in some sense, it gives me maybe a more playful personality in other languages because yeah. I, I try to just, in some sense, lean into that fact that, okay, I'm not perfect in this. People are going to know I'm not a native speaker. Yeah. Lean into that. I love that new expression of English to lean into something, to like own it. Um, and I mean, it depends too on what the line, like in Portuguese, I, I say that Portuguese has made me an extrovert in English. I'm normally like rather quiet. Um, and in Portuguese, for example, during conversations, you have to nod your head a lot. You have to give a lot of feedback because if you're not, the other person wonders if you've if you're paying attention, if you've understood everything. Whereas in English, like if you're telling me a story, Ethan, I could sit there with my arms crossed and just like nod every once in a while. But So there are so many resources, courses, and videos out there. It can be overwhelming to know how exactly you should improve your English, right? This is especially true if you want to do it alone, without a teacher. Now, Veronica Mark from English with Veronica Mark has succeeded at achieving exceptional English speaking by herself, and she told me how she did it. I recommend that you watch that lesson next. Let's watch a clip from it now. When I was still in middle school or in high school, it was really hard for me because I was trying to learn English. I was like constantly doing something and a lot of my classmates didn't really understand me. They were like, why are you studying? Like you should go party and not study. And I just really liked it. They didn't understand me. And at first it really hurt me because I was a teenager. I was like, oh my God, I don't have any friends. No one understands me. But then when I moved to Moscow, I realized that like happiness is in my hands. Right?